Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a comparison range test of the Segway 9Bot Max G2 and the newly released Apollo Go. Now, in the range test I did at the Apollo Go, I was actually able to squeeze out 19.2 miles with an average speed of approximately 14 miles an hour. And that was with the scooter set to a maximum speed of 20 miles an hour, which we're going to be doing today with the 9Bot Max G2. Now, both the 9Bot Max G2 and the Apollo Go both have the same 36 volt, 15 amp hour battery. So it'll be interesting to see how the 9Bot Max G2 does on this course. This is actually the first time I've taken this scooter on this particular route. Now the biggest difference of course as you probably already know is that the 9Bot Max G2 has a single 450 watt motor whereas the Apollo Go has dual 350 watt motors. So that's definitely something to keep into consideration uh, when looking at the results of this test. Alright so right now we are at approximately 2.2 miles and 99% battery life. Uh, and so, so far, so good with the 9Bot Max G2. Now, one thing I do want to mention about the 9Bot Max G2 is that, you know, in my past test, this scooter has gotten really good range. For example, last summer on a completely different course, uh, all paved roads, completely flat, I was able to get approximately 32 miles on a single charge, which was absolutely insane. Um, on my mountain courses, when I take this up on uh, the hill climb test at South Mountain Regional Park, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, I'm able to get, you know, 17 miles of range up and down 2,000 feet of elevation gain. So one thing that the 9Bot Max G2 has going for it is that it's very optimized for range. And part of that is due to, you know, the optimizations that Segway makes to this scooter to squeeze out more range, especially when compared to its predecessor, the G30 series. All right, so right now we are at four miles with 92% battery remaining. You know, and of course the 9Bot Max G2 on these dirt paths and gravel paths does exceptionally well because it does have a really robust suspension with the front hydraulic damper as well as the rear coil spring. So really good match to really make for a comfortable ride on a variety of terrain that you ride this thing on. All right, so we are currently at five miles with approximately 88% battery remaining. Now in terms of speed and acceleration, I think this is where the Apollo Go has a significant advantage in that it's able to get up to speed much faster than the 9Bot Max G2. And of course it also has a higher top end speed of 27 to 28 miles an hour compared to the Max G2's 22 miles an hour. So ultimately the Apollo Go does have a more sporty feel to it. It will get you from point A to point B quite a bit faster than the 9Bot Max G2. All right, so one thing that we're going to be testing out here is this pedestrian bridge. So I was able to go up this with the Apollo Go last time without issue, and it's a really steep bridge. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So we'll see how the 9Bot Max G2 fares. So far, so good. This. Max G2 is actually doing surprisingly well on this bridge. No issues at all whatsoever. And if you're curious, we're at approximately eight miles with 77% battery remaining. So tons of battery remaining in the tank. Now the beautiful thing about this trail system is that it's actually connected with the canal system here in the Phoenix metro area. And so you've got like 100 plus miles of bike paths that you can ride. Like you can literally go forever on this. All right, here is the same railroad crossing that we went over last time. So we are clear on the left, clear on the right, and the 9Bot Max G2 went over that really nice. All right, so we are officially at nine miles with 72% battery remaining. So lots of fuel in the tank. If you're curious, the Segway app does say that we've got approximately 17.9 miles remaining in the tank. So yeah, you know, what we'll do is we'll still turn around here because I really don't want to uh, get stuck walking this back. All right, so we are officially at 10 miles and 69% battery remaining. So, uh, so far, really good performance out of this. So we are officially at 11 miles with 65% remaining in the tank. And this is going to be the time right up here that I'm going to go ahead uh, and turn around and start heading back. 
Now, as I mentioned previously, you know, I was able to get upwards of 32 miles of range on the Ninebot Max G2, but that was, you know, towards the later part of last summer. And so since then, there have been quite a few firmware updates that have impacted the performance of the Ninebot Max G2 in various ways. For example, it doesn't have the same acceleration, uh, it takes a little bit longer to get, you know, to its top speed sometimes feels like it doesn't have as much torque as it used to have so it's definitely a different scooter than it was when it first launched so it'll be interesting to see you know how much range we're going to be able to squeeze out of this but so far i'm really impressed uh, with the range that we've been able to get now we are at 12 miles right now with approximately 62 percent battery remaining so we'll see if we can make it back to where we started now weather permitting tomorrow we'll be taking the apollo go up south mountain which you know, if we're able to make it up to the three lookout points, that would be approximately 2,000 feet in elevation gain. Now, I don't know that we're going to make it up there uh, to all three, but, uh, you know, we'll definitely give it a try. I'm hoping to at least make it to the first lookout point, which is a significant portion of that climb. And I think even that is about six miles um, almost continuous uphill climb. So we'll see how it does. We'll see how, you know, speed-wise it performs. Um, you know, Ninebot Max G2, I'm um, able to get to all three lookout points uh, and still have about 7 to 10 percent battery remaining by the end of it. So uh, we'll see. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that, you know, the Ninebot Max G2, before all of their firmware updates, was actually able to make it to all three lookout points without any assistance from me. Uh, after all those firmware updates, it's almost able to get to the top, but in the steepest section, it's going to require, you know, me pushing the scooter for about 150 or so feet. So, anyways, I'm hoping to get out there. It's supposed to rain. We're supposed to get storms rolling through uh, tonight into tomorrow. So, you know, that's really unfortunate. Uh, I don't want to be riding that scooter up a mountain, you know, during a thunderstorm or a rainstorm. So, you know, we'll see how the weather turns out uh, tomorrow morning but uh, if things are just marginally okay I'll still go up there you know the Ninebot Max G2 once you get past about 60 percent battery remaining uh, it starts dialing down the maximum speed so right now unlike before I'm unable to hit 20 miles an hour it's hovering around 19.5 to 19.7 and as the battery progressively gets lower and lower you'll see the speed taper off so uh, hopefully we'll make it back to the car without any assistance needed from me except me pushing this throttle in we are back at the train tracks Let's see clear on the right clear on the left and this scooter actually handles those train tracks without issue all right we are officially at 15 miles of range with approximately 50 percent battery remaining Back on the dirt and gravel road. All right, so we are officially at 18 miles with about 34% battery remaining in the tank. Uh, the app says that we've still got about 8.4 miles of range to be had. Uh, at this point, I don't doubt it. You know, <laughs> this thing is doing really well, so we'll see how we end up here. Now, one thing I do want to mention about this scooter is the battery life readout. Uh, it's really accurate, uh, actually, on the Segway Ninebot Max G2, and it's got uh, very good resolution to the battery readout, which I think is really important. Um, with the Apollo Go, the experience is a little bit different uh, in that, you know, it seems like it updates periodically and you get kind of big drops uh, and battery life, um, you know, between updates. And so you might look at uh, the screen and see 96%, and the next update is 86%, and then 81%, and then 75%. So, you know, I'm hoping that um, with future updates to the app and maybe firmware updates that uh, Paul might push out, that they can address that to give, you know, a more real time understanding of what that battery life remaining is. And that's one thing with the Ninebot Max G2 is that, you know, it's not a brand new scooter, you know, they added some suspension, they updated some features, but at the end of the day, 
It's really the successor to the G30 series, and Segway has had years of learnings from that scooter to incorporate into the Max G2, and so I think that's part of the reason why you've got a very refined experience with the Apollo Go. It is a newer scooter. Uh, I think there's going to be some updates that'll need to come out to address some of the, you know, battery readout uh, things that I'm seeing and all that fun stuff. But you know, so far, I'll tell you what, uh, the Apollo Go is a scooter that I really enjoy. In fact, uh, I can't tell you how often. You know, I'll go out for a ride and then I'll want to go ahead and get it charged up and go ride it again. It is a fun, sporty, zippy scooter uh, that allows you to get from point A to point B much quicker. Uh, and it also um, allows you to travel at a higher rate of speed. And so I think you know, that's going to be really important for commuters, especially when it comes to keeping up with traffic from a stop. So light turns green, you know, you need to go ahead and get ahead of those cars. With the Apollo Go, you're much better situated uh, than you are with the 9 Bot Max G2 because it does have that extra power. The other thing that I want to mention about the Apollo Go is that it's over seven pounds lighter uh, than the 9 Bot Max G2. So if portability is a thing, if those extra pounds matter, then there you go. Um, you know, we're at 19.4, I just want to call this out, we're at 19.4 miles with 24 percent battery remaining in the nine bot max and so we've already surpassed what we were able to do with the apollo go and we're still able to ride let's see 16 17 18 18 plus miles an hour so um, range is definitely the strong suit here all right so we are officially at 20 miles with approximately 20 percent battery remaining and that is when the battery indicator on the 9Bot Max G2 officially turns orange. And so we can expect uh, less output from the motor, a little bit slower top speed, as well as acceleration at this point. Now, in terms of the Apollo Go, you know, I don't know how they did it, but in terms of that premium feel, I would consider the Apollo Go as having an ultra premium feel. Uh, it's just something about the steering and the overall feel of the scooter that I think gives it a slight advantage over the 9Bot Max G2. It somehow feels even more solid than this scooter. So, kudos to Apollo for putting together a good scooter. Not all of them hold together very well. Some of them out there, you know, you ride around and you get rattles and shakes and things like that. Uh, with the Apollo and the 9Bot, they're really well put together. All right, so we are past the 21 mile mark. We've got about 15% battery remaining. So the question is, did I plan this trip correctly? Will I have to push this scooter back to the car? I certainly hope not, but we've got 14, 15% remaining. So we'll see how we end up here. Now, in case any of you were wondering, hey, what's the top speed that I can reach when I'm at 13, 14% battery remaining? Well, I'm still able to hit 18 miles an hour. So that's actually pretty solid. And I honestly think that's a little bit different than it was when I originally purchased this scooter before all the firmware updates. It definitely um, reduced your speed a little bit more at those uh, levels. So, all right, so I went ahead and switched into drive mode. And one thing I will say is that the readout on the Segway app uh, has stopped displaying up-to-date information. So I don't know if that's a, a feature that came with a firmware update. Uh, where it, uh, you know, stops showing you those estimates in order to conserve, you know, battery life or what. You know, I know that it's really not recommended to go below 10% battery remaining on a scooter. But anyways, right now we're cruising along. Uh, our distance measurement uh, has stopped, but uh, I do have GPS uh, measurements here. So, um, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to call it. All right, so there you have it. That was the range test with the Segway 9Bot Max G2. And on this ride, we were able to squeeze out approximately 22 miles with an average moving speed of 13.6 miles an hour. So really good with the 9Bot Max G2 on range. Uh, it did edge out the Apollo Go. And as you recall, the Apollo Go, we were able to get 19.2 miles of range uh, out of that scooter on the same course. Now, one thing I do want to say is if you are interested in purchasing 
purchasing the Segway 9 Bot Max G2 or the Apollo Go, consider using my links below in the description as they help keep the wheels turning uh, on the reviews on this channel. And on that note, I do want to say that I purchased the 9 Bot Max G2 and the Apollo Go with my own money. These are not sponsored videos. Uh, in terms of hill climbability, I think both of these did uh, about the same in terms of hill climb uh, with the pedestrian bridge. So really impressed with the Segway on that. I wasn't sure uh, how well this would do on that steep of an incline. But uh, what I'm going to be doing tomorrow is taking the Apollo Go up to South Mountain uh, Regional Park, weather permitting, which is about 2,000 feet in elevation. Again, if we can make it to all three lookout points. So stay tuned. We're going to go over that. And uh, as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.